In this movie, we use this question from an old exam question paper about the Doppler effect to revise some characteristics of sound waves, how we graph them, how we read graphs about sound waves, and how we do calculations related to the Doppler effect. We're told that a police car that's moving at a constant velocity has a siren that's giving off sound. Inside the police car, we have a detector that's detecting the sound made by the siren. Meanwhile, on the road nearby, we have another detector, Q, that's stationary and is also measuring the sound from the siren. Then we're given graphs of the air pressure changes over time, measured by P inside the police car right next to the siren, and Q, which is stationary on the road. Now we first need to understand what these graphs are telling us. We see the y-axis says air pressure and the x-axis says time. What happens during production of sound? We know that a vibrating source pushes and pulls the air, in this case the medium is the air, so pushes and pulls the air particles next to it. And that creates longitudinal waves, sound waves, which consist of Parts of air that are pushed together and parts of air that are pulled apart. Compressions and rarefactions. And that is what a sound wave is. A series of compressions and rarefactions, compressions and rarefactions, moving out from the vibrating source that created the sound. These graphs represent the air pressure changes at one point over time. We see that as the sound waves pass through the point graphed, the air pressure increases, corresponding to a compression, and then decreases, corresponding to a rarefaction. Now, one full wave is one full cycle of going, let's say, starting from a compression through rarefaction and back to compression. So, between any two consecutive points in phase, for example, as I've just described, compression, rarefaction, compression again, that is one full wave. And the time period for one full wave is called the period of the wave. So we can use these graphs to read off the period of the particular waves detected. And we can see that the period is longer for Q. Often when we speak about waves, we refer to frequency rather than period. Frequency refers to how many waves pass a point in a time. For example, in a second. And frequency is the inverse of period. So when period is big, frequency is small and vice versa. So we see that the sound detected at Q has a longer period that means a lower frequency. We can also just see that by I because in P the graphs are more squashed together time-wise. In other words, on the x-axis. They're more squashed together, meaning you get more per time. There's a higher frequency. A higher frequency means a shorter period. And a higher frequency of sound is detected by sounding higher pitched. So P sound would be higher pitched. Q sound would be deeper. But why do they have different sounds? Because they are the same sound. They were made by the siren of the police car. So what is going on here? Something is changing the frequency and period of the sound from where it was emitted at P to where it was detected by, we could say, the listener at Q. So we can call P the source because it's right there at the source which made the sound. And we can call Q the listener. Now, this is the same sound, 
But yet, somehow, between the source and the listener, the frequency related to the period and the pitch of the sound changed. Why? Because of relative motion between the source and the listener. And that is what the Doppler effect is all about. In the Doppler effect, we get a different frequency detected between the source and the listener as a result of relative motion between the two of them. Now, if you don't know what I'm speaking about, please click on that link to remind yourself about the basics of the Doppler effect. Now, we know that if the source and the listener relatively move apart from one another, we get a stretching effect of the sound waves, making the period detected greater, the frequency less, deeper sound. Whereas if the relative motion between the source and the listener is movement together, then we get a squashing effect of the sound waves. So we detect a higher pitch. Why? Because we get a higher frequency, a shorter period. Now, what do we see in this particular case? We can see that Q, the listener, has a longer period, meaning a lower frequency, a deeper sound, than P, the source. So they must be moving apart. So we're getting the stretching effect. And indeed, we're told in the question that the police car P is moving away from the stationary point on the side of the road Q. And what we're asked to do is to explain how we can see that from the graphs. Now, of course, the long answer is what I've just explained. But if we're only asked to give a reason for one mark, clearly that's not what they're looking for. So very briefly, we would say that Q has a longer period, or we could say a lower frequency than P. And that shows that they are moving relatively apart. We need to know what the period is of each of these wave motions. What does the period mean? As I've already explained, it is the time for one full wave to pass a point. And so the easiest way to get that is this full wave over here, the time duration of that full wave over there. So we can see that for the sound at the source, at P, the period of the wave is 17 times 10 to the power minus 4 seconds. And for the listener, which is stationary away from the moving car, the period of the wave is 18 times 10 to the power minus 4 seconds. We are asked to find out what the frequency is at P. And so we just simply convert the period that I've just said in words into its associated frequency, remembering that frequency and period are inverses of one another. So frequency is equal to 1 over period. And I've just said the period, it is 17, don't forget that, multiplied by 10 to the power minus 4 seconds. So the frequency, its unit is per second which is the same thing as hertz. 1 divided by 17 times 10 to the power minus 4. Our answer is 588,24. We round off hertz or per second. And we can put that into one of the memories. Let's put it into memory A. So shift store A, because clearly we're going to use it again. The next question asks us to find out the speed of the moving police car. To do that, we need to understand this equation here. The frequency that the listener observes. Now, here we have the graph of the listener. There we have the period of the listener's wave that it hears. And so we could use a similar thing to what we did here to find out the frequency of the listener. And that must be the first step that we're going to do. Then we have these Vs, and what that means 
is the speed of sound. And we're told in the question that we must take it as 340 meters per second. Then we have VL, the speed of the listener. We're told that Q is stationary. So that is zero. So that part can be removed from this particular form of the equation that we're going to use here. Again, we have the speed of sound. It's traveling through air. And on these particular conditions of this day, we were told 340 meters per second. We have plus or minus the speed of the source. We're trying to find the speed of the source. Which do we use, plus or minus? That depends upon whether the relative motion is apart or together. Since it's apart, we must use plus down here. If it had been towards, we would have used minus. Then we multiply that by the frequency of the source, which is what we found. Let's maybe just qualify this as frequency of source. In other words, frequency measured by P. Right, so as I said, the first step is to find the frequency of the listener. Very simple. All we do is we get the inverse of the period, which we've already said is 18 times 10 to the power minus 4 seconds. We do that on our calculator. 1 divided by 18 times 10 to the power minus 4. And we find it to be 555, 5556. Five, five, let's round it off. But let's put that also into a memory. Let's put that into memory B. So shift store B. So we have both of these stored now in our memory because we know that we're going to use both of them. Right now, we write the form of this equation that's going to be relevant here. So here I've reproduced that equation without a VL because that's zero and with a positive sign rather than a negative one because we're getting relative motion apart. Let's substitute this value in there, this value in there, and we know that this value is 340. We need to solve for that. So we just need to be careful about our algebra. To clear the fraction, we multiply both sides by this. I still have this value on my calculator, so I can simply say multiply by 340. If you have cleared your calculator, what you do is you press recall B, and up comes B. Remember, we placed this into the variable B, and we placed this one into variable A. Multiplied by 340. And we get a rather large number. If your calculator is not yet in scientific notation, put it in that. Shift mode 7 for scientific notation. And then you can say 9 to show all 9 digits. And we see that the answer is 1,889. But we're going to place this value also into one of our memories so that we don't have to clear it times 10 to the power of 5 plus 555,56vs is equal to, now we're going to need to calculate this, but we don't want to clear away what we've just calculated there. So let's store that, shift, recall, to make it store, C. Now we need to clear, but we mustn't clear the memory away as well. So don't press the on button to clear everything. Just press the AC button. That retains the memory. And then we want to recall the value that we had stored in A. So we press recall A and we multiply that by 340 and we get 2, comma zero, 0, times 10 to the power 5. So to solve for this, we need to subtract this from both sides and then divide through by that value. We can do that in one step. So we know that the velocity of that police car is this value minus that value, all divided by 555, comma, 56. We have this value still on our calculator, minus, remember we'd stored this value into variable C, Recall C equals, and now we divide by what we had stored in B. Divide by recall B. And we get our answer, 
at the moment, my calculator is displaying something in scientific notation that would be a lot simpler, not in scientific notation. I hope you can see what it actually stands for. But if not, let's change it back to normal notation. Shift, mode, and we choose 8, normal. We can choose 2, and we see that the answer is 20 meters per second. So the police car is driving at 20 meters per second.